Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to cover some quick diagnostic testing that can be done directly at the data link connector, or the DLC. We'll quickly overview the OBD2 DLC connector, how to quickly orientate the connector so you can tell which terminals are which, and also how to do some quick testing at the DLC with a multimeter to test for powers and grounds, and also we'll touch on CAN bus testing. I wish that I would have learned these tips years ago. They're easy, and I'm telling you that I've seen dozens of times where a technician overlooks a problem that could have been quickly brought to light by testing at the DLC. So let's get started. The OBD2 onboard diagnostic connector, commonly referred to as the DLC, has been in use since 1996 in the United States. It has 16 terminals, commonly called pins. Note that depending on a vehicle application, all 16 pins are rarely used. Seven of these pins, 1, 3, 8, 9, 11, 12, and 13, can be used at the vehicle manufacturer's discretion. Six of the 16 pins, 2, 6, 7, 10, 14, and 15, are designated for specific vehicle communication protocols. We will touch on pins 6 and 14, the CAN bus protocol, as it is one of the most common protocols in use these days. This leaves us with three pins that are common to all vehicles with an OBD2 connector. Pins 16, pins 4, and 5. Here's a quick way to orientate the DLC so you know where to find the pins. Looking at the front of the DLC, meaning looking at the connector as if you were going to plug a scan tool into it, there is a tab on the bottom or shorter side of the connector that is for retention of a scan tool when it's plugged in. Moving in a counterclockwise direction from the retention tab to the far corner is pin 16. This is battery positive. Continuing counterclockwise, directly opposite of this tab, are pins 5, signal ground, and pin 4, chassis ground. I have found many problems when the voltage between pins 4 and 5 measures more than 2 volts. Note that many scan tools will internally bridge a connection between pins 4 and 5. If you ever have a vehicle problem that mysteriously goes away when you plug in your scan tool, always check here first. No power at pin 16 is usually as simple as a blown fuse. The next really quick and easy test that has helped me determine if the CAN bus is intact is testing the resistance between pins 6 and 14. The CAN bus, which is short for controller area network, has two 120 ohm terminating resistors that are ran parallel to each other on the bus. So a proper reading of the CAN bus is 60 ohms. Note that a reading of 120 ohms would indicate an open in the CAN bus circuit. To test the CAN bus resistance, always start with the key off. Probe between pin 6 and 14. Once again, note that the key must be in the off position to obtain a proper reading. I have made the mistake of testing it with the key on and you get wrong readings, guaranteed. Readings that are very low would indicate a shorted CAN bus, while high readings could indicate an open circuit. Many times I've had readings between pin 6 and 14 resistance that would never stabilize anywhere from 150 to a million ohms, and it was usually due to a bad module, a faulty module causing the issue. Uh, another test for pins 6 and 14 is measuring the voltage between those pins and ground. They should be approximately 2.5 volts. I have seen many faulty CAN bus modules actually pull down the voltage on these lines to a one volt or less. Here we're going to perform these tests in the real world. An example on this 2014 Toyota Prius, here's how quick it is to do the quick checks. On our DLC, the locking tab is down here, which means on the opposite side of the locking tab is pins four and five. Putting our meter on DC volts, we can probe pin 4 and 16, and we have 12.24 volts, which is battery voltage. Keeping our meter lead on pin 16, move another one to pin 5. We also have 12.26 volts, which is good. Going between pins 4 and 5, Testing here, we're showing 3.9 millivolts. So we can actually start the car 
turn the car on and watch this reading. It'll usually go up just a little bit. Oh, up to 27 millivolts difference between pin 4 and 5. Note this is auto ranging to millivolts. If we had like more than a volt and a half, two volts, that's usually where you're going to be running into an issue with the ground on a vehicle. While we're also still on pin four or five, we can test pin 14, which is our CAN bus, which is 2.3 volts. Usually it's supposed to be about 2.5, but I found, you know, 2.2 to 2.6 volts usually. And on the other side, we have 2.6 volts. This is pin six of the CAN bus. So that's how we test that. Turning the key off. If we put our multimeter to the ohm range, and note, you have to do this with the key off. I always like to test my meter leads. Going between pin six and 14 at the Dale C, we should be reading 60 ohms. And on this vehicle, with the key in the off position, we're reading 62 ohms between pins 6 and 14. That's a normal CAN bus. An open circuit on a CAN bus, uh, for, uh, depending on where it's at in the line, could result in a reading of 120 ohms. I have found anywhere from 55 to 65 ohms as a normal reading. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I really do hope that you got something out of it and learned something. If you did, please like and share. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thanks a lot for your time. Have a great day.